Hey, Mike here from learndevops.com.au. Head on over to the website, join the community. We are big now, we're nearly 2,000 members and we've got loads of people that can help you with any questions that you might have about this topic, which is Terraform versus Pulumi. What is Pulumi? What is Terraform? How do they verse each other? Who wins the fight? Well, look, no, no one tool is perfect. No one tool is gonna give you a catch-all result that's gonna solve all your problems. But what I will say is this, Terraform is about consistency when you come to defining your state and Pulumi can offer you no consistency when it comes to defining your state. Why is that? Well, Pulumi offers you the ability to define your state in a very sort of fluid manner using an imperative programming language such as Python or C Sharp and some other options as well. The problem with that is that this means that you can virtually do anything you want to reach your desired state. That's not a good thing. Here's why. You go into an organization and you start writing some Pulumi code. So it's basically, it's a library. So you write it in Python. Now, what's to say that I don't define the state that I want for a particular service as a class? And then I put that class inside a library and then I abstract it with a more complicated class structure. And then I put it behind some functions and then I put it in nest out within a bigger library. And then I learn how to use it and it works really well and I get the desired state and so on and so forth. And then I move on to another organization. What happens when someone steps into your shoes, right? So you move on and someone steps into, steps into your shoes, right? The problem you've got is what if they don't know Python? Now, okay, Python is a very common language. It's a very powerful language. It's very well known. It's very likely that someone's going to know Python. Whoever's stepping into your shoes is probably going to know the language. However, they've now got to learn about your class structure, how you're organizing everything, all the code, all the libraries. Where do you store those libraries? You're running a, a custom PyPy server. You're putting it in a public PyPy server and a Git repository. It just gets more and more complicated when you when you develop in an imperative language, especially if you're going to start using things like C Sharp as well, which are not as common. Like what if you use C Sharp and it's just not a very common language? What if you use JavaScript? JavaScript is very common, but not in DevOps. Not many DevOps engineers that I know actually know JavaScript all that well. It's actually quite a complex language. Its syntax is quite complicated. So it's, it is a bad thing being able to actually use an imperative language. And the, another reason is when you when you move to another organization, so in our example, we've moved on. If we move into another organization that always, or already uses Pulumi and you say in the interview, what do you use for your state management for your infrastructure's code? And they say Pulumi. Oh, brilliant. That's that You're just going to know how to do that, right? Mm, no. You're going to know how to interact with the Pulumi library. But what if they've written their, their stuff in C Sharp and you were previously Python? Now you've got to learn a whole new language. So it's not the same at all. And not only that, but what if you move from one organization that used Python to another organization that used Python, but they didn't use classes. They used a completely different structure altogether. All kinds of duct typing. What if they wrapped it up in a Flask application with a front end in front of it? Sounds really cool. Sounds really nice. But you've now got to learn how that works just to manage state. Pulumi is also a SaaS product first. So that means that when you write some Pulumi code and you write the code and you push it and you, and you, and you, and you, and you apply it, equivalent to Terraform apply, that state gets pushed directly, instantly, by default, to a Pulumi managed service, so a SaaS product, and you have to configure it to be self-managed. And if you don't know how to do that, then you're screwed. Because if you if you if you think, well I want to control the state, it's very sensitive and you don't know that and it pushes it up to the Pulumi service, that's not a good thing. Especially if someone decides to use some sort of live project with potential secrets in there to test and discover Pulumi. What if they do a spike with Pulumi using some sensitive information? It's going to hit an unknown foreign remote network by default. I don't like that at all. Okay, so how does Terraform differ from that? But before we get into that, I'd like you to just head on over to learndevops.com.au, scroll down just a tad and click that button and you'll see that there's a link there to our Discord community. Nearly 2,000 members now. I can't believe it. It's just getting so big. Chatter every day. That's a place to ask questions about this kind of stuff. So how does Terraform differ? Well, I'll just get straight to the point. Terraform HCL, HashiCorp Configuration Language, is about defining state in a limited and but but cons uh, limited and consistent but very very robust and complicated manner in the sense that it can get very complicated or it can be really really simple but it will be consistent between engagements you go from job a and then you go from job b and it's terraform and terraform there's only so many ways you can actually manage a terraform code only so many ways you can manage a terraform state file everyone knows what the state file is how to manage it how to secure it i've done videos on that it's going to be consistent across the board terraform gives you a state file which you've just got to protect and it automatically doesn't offload it to some unknown remote network that you have no control over. Who can see that data? Who's looking at that data? Are they analyzing the state file? 
Are they using it to map out your network and attempt to be helpful when in actual fact that's just sort of breached some regu regu regulation that you've got to be compliant with? And Terraform, again, will be consistent between organizations. So I'm just not a fan of Plumi at all and the concept of a, of a cloud development kit. Because as, as fun as it sounds to be able to just use Ruby or Python to develop your, your state that then goes on to manage your infrastructure for you, the problem you have is that other people have to work with whatever it is that you produce. And if you're a really bad programmer and your formatting is really bad and your code is just generally hard to understand and, and work with, then the whole thing sort of breaks down as a concept because now someone's got to learn something new. They've got to work with a very complicated system. Maybe they've got to work with thousands upon thousands, maybe even tens of thousands of lines of Ruby. You're now dependent on an external vendor, two external vendors, Pulumi and Ruby, Pulumi, or Pulumi and Python, and so on and so forth. It's why Ter Terraform will always trump with me. Now, I know Terraform has a CDK as well, but... Just Terraform with HCL, define your state, get on with it. It's so much easier. Just trust me, please. You don't don't try and overcomplicate this. Just use this tool in its simplest form and you will be able to get the job done. LearnDevils.com.au. Head on over and join the community. Hopefully that was helpful. Thanks very much. Very nice.